Hello, beautiful people and wonderful subscribers. Welcome back to the IWM YouTube channel, the channel for you that loves music and you also want to know how it's done. So if that fits you, click the button, subscribe to the channel. Wow, you noticed my great t-shirt. Hmm. This is uh, called Clemson, some kind of college, I believe. And I got it from my wonderful friend Wally Dawson uh, on the island of Okinawa. How about that? And, you know, hi, Wally. I hope you and your family is doing fantastic. Uh, but I want more stuff. I want like a baseball cap or some cool, cool thing that you can't find in Sweden. So please send that to me. Okay, today we want to talk about my two greatest and biggest producing hacks of all time that I use every single day and I want you to know them by the end of the day. So are you ready? Let's go! So we want to talk about the two greatest hacks that I can provide to you today and it's all about uh, the producing phase of things. Also a little bit about mixing as well. So we're gonna hit the studio and I have recorded an extremely cheesy song here that I want you to listen to. Just so kind. Okay, um, so I recorded this very simple thing and I want you to, to look at this uh, section as the first verse and this section as the chorus and back to the verse. And I'm gonna explain why later. Okay, so let's start with hack number one. Um, we wanna <laughs> create something that really takes the chorus into the next you know, generation or the the next phase or something, you know, we're going to lift it up. So what do we do? Well, we want to find a place where we have a big downbeat, like in the end. And we want to bounce the whole part of this. So let's bounce this. We bounce it to a simple file here, and I'm gonna put it very simply on my desktop called Bounce. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we wanna import the bounce again into the DAW Bounce. See? Here it is. We'll put it here. And if we just listen to this one, it will sound like this. Okay, exactly the same, yeah? So what we wanna do is that we wanna double click and reverse the sound. And in my case, I have some kind of click on the file and then reverse, whoops. So it sounds like this. <gasps> Magic, and in the end, we're gonna adjust so that we don't hear the snare. Okay, mm -hmm. and maybe not the, the downbeat as well, okay. So what do we do with this one? Well, we're gonna find our chorus, which is around here. Okay, so we wanna have something that really builds things up. So we wanna add, uh, take this sweep, this fade in type of wishy wishy thing, and we're gonna take the, uh, bring the volume down a lot, and then we're gonna see what happens if we just add this in. Maybe with a little more volume. Okay, so did you hear that? Well, 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 we're gonna increase the volume a little bit more. Yeah. So the timing is not perfect at the moment. We're gonna just uh, put it a little bit to the right, uh, like this. We 
have just created some kind of a fade in, some kind of swell, call it whatever. Uh, the effect will probably be something that can bring the chorus to the next level, to a bigger level. And the, 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 the funny thing with this is that we have already used the elements of the downbeat, like the, we had the elements of the drums, the original keys, the original bass and all that. So we really build the, the sweep, the, the fade in from, that, from those sounds. So we don't import elements from outer space, we just use what we have, which is good. Okay. That was the first one. The second one is something that I called even more chorus effect uh, power. Okay, so what can we do if we feel like um, we, 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 we enter the, the, the verse and then when the chorus comes, it doesn't really, you know, becomes fat. It doesn't be become loud. What do we do? You know? It's not loud enough. I mean, we cannot increase the volume of everything in the chorus, can we? No, not really, because we're gonna hit, it's gonna be uh, some kind of distortion, some kind of clipping. But we can lower the other parts of the song. Ooh, how about that? So, let's hit the automation. The automation is here, and I'm gonna try to, this is the zero that we wanna have uh, in the chorus. <gasps> So we're gonna put that in the chorus, around that, like that, and then we wanna make another mark and then maybe take it down. Let's exaggerate this process a little bit. So let's take it down like 2 dB. And then when the chorus is over, yes, you guessed it, back to minus 2 dB. You have to experiment with, um, uh, how much, maybe I use like 1 dB most of the time, but here for educational purposes, uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a exaggerated way of doing things. So, how does this sound? You liked that, didn't you? Okay, one more. One alternative is to just uh, smooth this fade in a little bit. Look at this. Wow! How about that? My two biggest producing hacks of all time that I use almost every single day. So, first of all, do you remember? Okay, first of all, we have some kind of a downbeat. We bounce that, put that on reverse, blend that in so that we have a, some kind of a fade in, swell effect and in, in, onto, into the chorus or any other part of the song, doesn't really matter. And number two was that we can't uh, have more volume on the chorus than we already have if we don't want to use compression and all that. That's another story. But what we can do is to, to put the other parts of the song in a uh, less loud <laughs> volume. We can take the volume down on those parts. And yeah, you know, magic is happening. Let's exaggerate. So, if you like what I do, please subscribe to the channel. What is your biggest producing hacks of all time? Please put that in the comments and let's discuss because I want to learn and I hope you want to learn as well. That was all for today. Thank you again, Wally Dawson, for this beautiful t-shirt. I hope to have more in a few weeks. Okay, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.